Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at a quick tip for simulation, which is visualizing our solver generated contacts and what that actually means. So the contact visualization tool, when we right click on our connections folder in a simulation study is a really useful tool. And that's great to let you visualize contact interactions between different components in an assembly. There's a particular option within the contact visualization plot that I want to explore today. And that's what allows us to actually visualize the contact interactions that are occurring on an element by element basis, which we normally don't have access to. And normally we don't need to worry about inside SolidWorks simulation. So this is really more of a learning area, interest area, if you are uh, interested. So here I have just a simple block, but what I have is a, is a gap between the two bodies. And if you took our training class, you might know that typically we, we discourage at least to bond across large gaps. Um, it can be acceptable to bond across small gaps, but this isn't the default behavior in the software. It won't automatically bond between gaps unless we tell it to. So here I have set up under a contact set, a bonded contact between these two uh, items. And I want to visualize how that is actually performed behind the scenes in the solver. So to do that, I can right click on my connections folder. And if I go to a contact visualization plot and choose to calculate, by default, it's just going to show me the information I already put in. So it's going to show me, okay, I have a, what it calls a manual contact between those two bodies, but it looks like it's between the full faces, which we know that's not actually the way the solver works. It works by projecting the faces onto each other to figure out where to put in those contact elements. So I can visualize that by turning on solver generated contacts, but that requires creating a mesh first. So I'll go over here and just create an initial mesh for this study. And this is a rather coarse mesh. Okay. But now if I go back into my contact visualization plot, I'll include the solver generated contacts. And if we click down here to where it says auto bonding surface to surface, we'll actually see kind of the imprint of my separated body on the plate. And we can see that the contact region is not completely precise. This is partly due to the fact that because there's a gap between there, we're not enforcing what we call compatible contact like we would if the two items were touching. If they were touching each other, then by default simulation would make sure that all the nodes are shared across the boundary and it would make a really nice smooth contact imprint. So here we can see there's a little uh, bit of averaging going on across that interface. Now, another rule of thumb you might have heard from our training classes is to use split lines to create separate faces for selections for areas such as this, where you might want to be applying contact conditions uh, between two items, whether that's bonded or no penetration. So I wanted to see if we could improve these results by applying a split face. I have another study set up here and switch over to where we'll see we simply just sketched a circle or converted entities of a circle and use the SOLIDWORKS split line command under features curve split line to create an extra face selection on that back plate. So in this study, the contact set is defined between those two faces. And we'll repeat the same procedure here, creating the mesh and generating the contact visualization plot with the solver generated contacts included. In this case, we see we have a very refined contact interaction. Even when I click on auto bonding between the surfaces, um, we can see that it's very localized in the, in the region we're interested in. Okay. Again, it's worth noting that you don't typically need to go to this level of detail to, to ensure this refinement. But if you really want to understand what's going on behind the scenes in your contact interactions, then including the solver generated contacts, in the contact visualization plot is the most information we can possibly get out of the software to learn about what's going on with the contact elements.